Hey, what's up everyone? This is Music Tech Help Guy, and in this video, I'm gonna show you a trick I like to use to quickly build like demo, rough scratch musical arrangements using the arrangement markers and the session players in Logic Pro 11. Now, some of you may know I have been really hesitant to use arrangement markers in the past just because they've been incredibly buggy in the past, but I believe all of those issues have been fixed now. Probably as of, you know, two or three versions ago, they've been fixed. These can be really helpful because the session players will attempt to build out a musical arrangement um, using your arrangement markers as a reference, and not just in terms of the chord progression that you put on the chord track, but also the dynamic that's played in each section. So quite often I'll have artists over and my job is to be their producer. And, and often what they'll bring me is lyrics, a melody, and a chord progression and nothing else. And it's my job as the producer to sort of flesh out the musical arrangement. And while I'm not going to use the session players verbatim to build out a musical arrangement for them, it's a way that while they're here sitting right in front of me, we can put together a, a basic musical arrangement in just a couple of minutes, and then I can have them lay down a scratch track, and then later on, I can use those session players and the chord progression that I entered to you know, flesh out my own custom musical arrangement. So I certainly wouldn't recommend composing this way, but it's a really easy way to just get like a scratch track or a demo track down that you can use as a reference for later. Okay, so let me show you how this works. The very first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to create some arrangement markers to sort of build out the musical arrangement. Um, and so you can get to your arrangement markers by clicking here to show your global tracks. You can also press G to hide and show your global tracks. And then if you don't see arrangement here, you can right click or control click and make sure that arrangement is shown. And so I'm just gonna click the plus button here and it's automatically gonna give us uh, an intro marker. I can click again. It's gonna give us a verse, click again, it's gonna give us a chorus. Uh, I don't really want a chorus there. Uh, I really want the chorus to be here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to click here and I'm gonna give this a different name. I'll call this pre-chorus. And then I'll create another marker. Uh, this will be the chorus. And then obviously I wanna have like a bridge and then I wanna have an, out, uh, an outro section as well, okay? So now I've got my sections there and we can move these around and we can you know, uh, play around with the arrangement later, but this is just to get these things in place. Um, and then I'll click on my chord track here or make sure you show your chord track. It's also helpful to set your key up here. I'm just gonna work in A minor to keep this simple. And let's say the artist brought me an intro and verse chord progression that's A minor seven. I'll hit tab to tab over, um, D minor seven, tab, E minor seven, tab, C major seven, tab, A minor seven, whoops. Uh, and then we'll do F major seven again, G, and then E minor seven. And just remember when you tab over, um, this is dependent on what snap mode you have selected. So if you're doing one chord per bar, I'd make sure to set your uh, snap to bar. Now this same chord progression is going to be used in the verse. So I'll hold option and duplicate that over just like so. And then the same chord progression is actually going to be used in the chorus as well. Okay, so the pre-chorus is going to have its own chord progression. So let's add a different progression in here. Let's do F major 7, G, A minor, C major 7. Then we'll do F major 7. Let's go back to C, but let's do like C over G. And then we'll do uh, B flat. We'll do like a flat 2. And then we'll end on an E minor seven as our five chord. And then you could add a completely different chord progression for the bridge and the outro. Just for uh, sake of demonstration and to save time here, I'm going to uh, go ahead and just create a chord. And then I'm going to right click on this and I'm going to uh, create a chord progression. And we'll do something like this. There we go. So we're just using a, you know, a preset chord progression for that. And then for the outro, we'll use the same chord progression as the chorus. So I've got the chords entered. And again, this is what the artist would already bring you, right? So I'm I'm not composing here. I'm just following what they're giving me. And then to build out our basic musical arrangement, our demo, I'm just going to create a new keyboard player, bass player, and drummer. So for keyboard player, let's go ahead and use the Freely preset. So what you'll see is when you use arrangement markers with session players, 
the session player is not going to just create one session player region. It's going to create a different session player region for each and every section that you've labeled with an arrangement marker. And it's also going to change the dynamic and the preset and the settings inside of the session player uh, editor for each section. So let's go ahead and create another one. Let's create a bass player. The pop songwriter is just fine. And you'll see it does the same thing. It gives us six different uh, regions. And then we'll go to drummer. Uh, sure, we can use the Neo Soul preset there. And now what we've done is we've created a really simple backing track that follows the, the chord progression that I fed the chord track. So let's give this a listen. Um, I'll just listen to a little bit of the intro, then verse, and we'll, we'll jump over to the pre-chorus and chorus. So you can hear that the dynamic is really low in the intro on purpose. And then if we jump over to the verse you'll see that the complexity and intensity both go up there. Let's jump over to the pre-chorus. has it changed the dynamic of the session player regions. It's also switched from like a side stick to like a regular snare hit. Um, let's go ahead and listen to this from 21 here. Uh, I'm really interested to see what this uh, flat two and C over G sounds like. It may not sound great. I think maybe just a C here would work better than a C over G. But again, what I have here is six different sections that I can use to build out my arrangement. Now, the magic of arrangement markers is that you can hold option on the arrangement marker, uh, hold option and drag, and pull this wherever you want it to go, and it'll automatically shuffle over uh, the other regions and the other markers. So let's say I want to do another pre-chorus next to this verse right here and then another chorus, and then I want the bridge, then I want one final chorus, and then I want the outro. So like within a couple of minutes, within a few minutes, you can build out a complete demo musical arrangement. And again, I'm not advocating for just saying, this is my song, record your vocal and bounce. No, I'm saying this is a great way to, to get a demo track, especially if you're in the producer's chair and you need to come up with something really quick for the singer to sing to and maybe lay down a demo vocal. Um, that's the way I do it. I'll have them lay down a demo vocal. I'll have a demo musical arrangement like this that's kind of sort of in the style that they're looking for. And then I'll, you know, another day I'll go back in by myself and I'll build out uh, the musical arrangement. So just real quick, let's listen to the last four of the chorus and then the bridge into the final chorus. these sections are maybe a little too busy, especially in the piano parts. So again, you can just come in here and you can change these up. Maybe I want the, uh, the choruses to be a little less busy. I can do that. There we go. Just keep in mind that if you change one of the regions uh, after you've uh, copied them over, it's not going to change all of them. So like here's the last chorus. The complexity is pretty high. And then on this one, I pulled the complexity down. So in this case, if I wanted to bring that over here, I'd have to move that region by itself. But you could do those adjustments before you make the, you know, before you copy and paste 
the arrangement markers. So, and or you can use this as a way just to apply a little bit of variation from section to section. You know, maybe I want verse two to be really soft. I can do that. Or maybe in verse one or the intro, I want to limit the range of the hands of the piano. I can do something like that. Okay, so that's how you can use the session players, the chord track, and the arrangement markers to quickly build out demo arrangements when working with other artists. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. As always, thank you so much for the support and thanks for watching.